Hello, good day. I am Top Man Paul DK, and we are here again. So, our BRDC2 will be completing the work he started on the back end development. Yeah, so he will be presenting. Um, pay attention if you have any questions and you are live with us, do it to ask as um, comments or as income messages, or you, you can, we could raise your hand and we'll let you talk. And if you're watching on YouTube, please put your question as a comment on this video and we'll be glad to respond to you thank you very much over to you sir all right so um welcome back guys so this was where we stopped initially we we're trying to um make an make a query to insert some data in our database for the specified fields which are the first name last name i believe we're here and i also talked about you looking at sql injection so the reason why we are passing this this um, question mark question mark that I passed here, they are called SQL um I think um query parameters or something, but it is used to prevent to avoid SQL injection. I believe you guys are actually um going to check that. So not to waste too much of our time. <coughs> so this was where we actually stopped. We created a variable that is going to store the query to what to insert some of the info that is gotten from the user, which is the request body, into the what's the database that we what that we created in the db.js, that's the database connection. So now, if this is actually, so we are going to continue from here. Now, so, you know, I mentioned something about business ID, okay? So business ID is actually going to be a unique um, ID. Okay, I think there's a typo here. This should be comma, not full stop. So business ID should be a unique, it should be generated uniquely by what, by this our code. Every time they were they send a request to this endpoint. So I'm just going to create, because we're not collecting our business ID from the user. So I'm just going to create a variable for that. It's equal to a randomly generated what? Um, ID. Now we are going to use um a library from our npm called what? I need to change into the backend. I need to change into this other side here. So and I'm going to run npm for UUID. Yeah. So from this UUID, we are going to use the v4 function from here so i'm just going to say import import before i'm structuring it or oh, let me just say import uid okay from the uid on library that you just was installed so inside this place so i'm just going to call the uid dot before there's a before um method or function of this which is going to create a uniquely um, generated random um um id for this on um, business id it contains both characters and um digits and numbers actually so for this one so yeah i think that's what i even added a comment that we are going to continue from implementing the uid for business id which is just what i actually did here i didn't see this comment earlier on so before this new user is created, this user ID will be what this business ID will be generated and it will pass as what has the value here into the what into the table of what user info. All right. So after this has been created, we want to send a response to the what to the user that says what return we want to return rest dot. We can set a status code for this what the status header for this which is 201 okay you might want to check what some um, status code are okay then i want to send a json what objects so 201, uh, 201 is the code used for um when um a new data was created so i want to create this that says that sends a message the user that says or what um let me just say let's just say user if this should be a string be a score for example to me user 
created successfully. Then probably if I want to like um let the user see the data or that's if the I can just pass in the second um another um key value pair which contains data as a key, then the value will be what the new user that was what created in this place. But there's one thing about this guy, there's a it should be new user dot rules or something, but I'm going to figure it out later on. Just leave down for a minute. So now, so if there is any error from this, from when this code was being run, I, I explained on this try catch on statement. So if there is any error, I want to console.log the error first. Console.log. I can just say um, error creating user and just give me the what's the error message. That's the error dot message. Then I want to return something to the user. Okay, return res dot a 500 status, which means that what this was an error from what from our what from our code. So I'm just going to pass in the message that says internal server error. I don't want to show the user the kind of error that is what that is causing the code to fail to fail. All right, I think there are too many bracket here so this should be the parentheses then the code bracket that should that should do it yeah so now i've created what the endpoint the controller function to actually what um create a new user for us in the database so going back to the route now you know in the routes it was from the route that what we with this handler to be what to be created as a set function inside this user.controller file. So now that I've created it, but I need to what actually what export this particular what this particular function. Okay, so I'm just going to say export what's wrong with you guy? Export const create user so that this what create user function can be available anywhere inside inside another file. So we can use it here. So going back to our route that contains the path and the words and the handler. Okay, now I can replace the handler for this with what with the create user function from that um from the controller file. So the first thing I actually want to do is first to import that particular word function. So I'm just going to say import. So I'm going to destructure it. So I'm going to say import create user yeah from the particular part where the was where the function is coming from. So I can now use it inside there and call it the what the create user function. So when you send the post request to this what to this to this part, the create user um function is going to run. So inside this is getting the words all this data from the world from the request body basically from the user then what generating a unique id for the business id then what then passing that on data that is gotten from here together with this or uniquely generated on business id into the what into the database by using this sql query i'm sure you already know that and if this is successful what the user will just see is what we just see this message that says that what new uh, user created successfully, then it's going to get what the user information that is this new user information in the words as a data, which is together with the words with the response. If there's any error, it's going to get this message that says that what internal server error. But on our console, because this is development stage, we'll be able to see the kind of error so that we can what easily what debug it. So let's move on. But now, we also want to do some kind of um, authorization, authentication and authorization. We can actually what implement that using what's JWT, that's the JSON Web Token. There's a package called um, JSON Web Token in the, uh, the, um, in the node package and manager that's the NPM, JSON Web Token here. Yeah. So I'm just going to actually what install that. So I have npm install 
JSON web token. So the reason I'm actually on using this on JWT is to what is to authorize that works. You know, this is a price decision um, app and where we want um, users to create some um, different products and um, attach the price to it. We don't want different, um, we want to be able to keep track of which user actually was created these products and where are they coming from. But if without this, any user would just be able to create any product and be able to see the product of others or something and just um, probably a manipulate or edit or update the, what the product of another was another user. We don't want that. Okay. So now that we've, we've done this, so inside this place, I just want to what import. I'm going to begin everything here, so just to not waste too much of our time. So I'm just going to import JWT. I will call it JWT from, you can actually call this any name. You know, this one is just a variable. That is what we are just importing it from the library. So from what is the library name, JSON Web Token. So when the user is actually what's created, after the user has been created in the database, I want to what? I want to generate a JWT token. So after this, I want to generate, just add a comment here, generate a, or oh, yeah. A, what's your problem? A JWT token. So at this point, I'm just going to call it, I'm going to declare a variable const token. And I'm going to use the sign uh, method from this word, the sign function from this JWT token. So I'm just going to say JWT dot sign. Okay. Inside this sign, it actually takes object. What this take is. It takes um it can take up to three arguments. Okay. The first one is always the payload. That's what you want your token to work to to be comprises of what you want the token to be decoded as. You can use the business ID, you can use the user information or any sort of it. So let me just say now I want to pass in some payload, okay? And the payload will be I want to use the business ID actually. And um, probably I'm going to use, you know, this one is a uniquely generated um, um, ID, okay? And um, I want to also, this one is like you decrypting some um, some information and um, the user information as a token so that we can use that token to validate that. So this is the user that is what that is actually what's using what our app at this moment, all right? So let me just say I want to add, I don't know what it's called from here. Let's say I just want to add the first name. Okay, let me just do it like that. But okay, the first name should be from the new user when the user has been created. Dot first name actually. The user has been created. That's when I want to actually. What's this guy's problem? That's when I actually want to use this. But I think there is actually an error here. Let me pass in this. Mm, there's, always, there's always a something with this on query, which we are, we are still going to run into an error here, but we will debug it down. But in the meantime, let me just leave this like this. Let me just only pass the business ID. And then now the second argument is always a, a key. Okay, we need a secret key. It can be a random um, string. Okay. Let me just see. For now, I'm going to store my secret key inside the what inside is my dot file. Okay, let me just call it on secret. That's called key. I'm just passing a random number. Okay, so random number characters. You can pass in numbers to with it. Okay, this one is just a secret key. Okay, that's only you know. So without this secret key, you won't be able to work to um, to actually verify the token. We're going to talk about that later on. So I'm just going to say, let me let me know it in my dot env file. So I'm going to import the what the dot env. Remember we talked about this the last time from dot env, so that I'll be able to access what what is inside my dot env file. I need to call dot env dot config. 
add it all right so now i'm going to create a variable okay const um let me just say secret key let me just say secret key i want to store it in a variable here okay let me just do it like this secret key is equal to process <coughs> dot env dot secrets I remain the secret underscore key here. Yeah. So now that's what I'll pass in here. You know, this one is expected to come on argument, which is what the secret key. Then you can pass another argument to it, which is an object. So what you want your token to expire after some time, you can pass this for expired thing. You want it to expire in what? In probably 30 minutes. Just pass in 30 minutes as a string, rather, as a string. 30 and we stands for 30 minutes so your string will expire this token will expire in what in 30 minutes or you want it to expire in 30 or one hour okay. try to put like this one hour okay or i think it is 30 in my hand this is the right syntax for you or you can go to the um the npm library and go and look for this um jwt just to check the word we write on documentation, the right syntax for this. So let's just go here. Oh, this is not sorry, JW uh, JSON web token rather, not just JWT. So you can just read through, okay. This is two days, ten hours, okay, it's ten H and the likes of them. So those are the numeric value that you can pass in there. Okay, yeah, this is the syntax. Okay. This payload in it, but we can read through this to not waste too much of our time. So I think this should be, let me just see something here. Um, let's just say one hour talking to expire in one hour. Let me just pass it to one hour. Right. So now, and that token will be used to validate. So I need to actually what we turn that what token as a response to the user so that the when the content are actually we are going to work through this probably well let me just keep it in now we'll still try to explain it when the front end is trying to consume this word this particular what endpoint so this token that is being passed as a response there is all this data all this response is actually being used by what by the front end when they want to consume this particular what endpoint so that they will know that there's a token that needs to be attached as a um i think the call yeah that is going to be used to validate because when pass it as what as a header when they want to access another endpoint probably to add products uh, to update products and what to delete products but you want everybody to actually work to be able to work to see the product in any in any um business okay so there you have it I think we should test this or probably just go ahead and implement everything and do the general testing later on. So I think this is everything on that it was creating of the user. So the next thing we want to do is to log in the user. We want to log in the user definitely. Okay. So um back to this route. Okay, yeah, that's everything there. So actually, you can actually um write this somewhere inside another file and come and put, import it here, so that this your code that is here will not be what will not be too too jam packed, because you are still going to want to use this JWT dot sign again inside when the user is logging in. You need to also uh, generate a token so that you know it's not every time the user will have to create an account. This creation of account happens only once for a single user. And also, when this is I okay, we actually did not put some kind of check. We don't want um a user to with we don't want to use us uh, we don't want a user with to register twice. That means with the same what email address. Although in our model we pass the email address to be what to be unique, okay. Or even though there is a, another user trying to register with the same email address, this database, we are going to get an error from this database. The kind of error is not really clear that is coming from the database, will not really be clear to the user that what 
the user, we need to actually do a check that's what that's check for the email and sends and we are going to return the required um response response to the particular user saying that will probably um a user with this um email address already exists you know the appropriate response not the response coming from the what from the database i think the kind of response i get is something like about duplicate key or something like that which is not really clear we don't want the user to know all those kind of things we just want to send our own kind of response so that it will be clear to the user that's what that email has already been taken by another user correct so probably we're going to implement that later on there's still a lot of things that can be implemented here but let's move on so now we are going to work on the what the logic to login so i want to create this one to login user it's like this guy is really disturbing my the hey hi i'm using for auto completion so likewise just as this we are going to make this as an gosh, we are going to make this as an async function which is going to take request and response it's going to be an arrow function yes so we are still going to use our try catch statement here there's a way you can actually do this. You can write a, this, a try catch epa function inside another file. So that won't be using so many try catch, try catch here inside this particular file. You can see in every, in every um, controller function we are creating, we are using try catch um, statement. You can just create your own, um, implement your own try catch somewhere else in another file. Probably a epa folder and um, just create an epa function. That is going to help you with this what with this try catch. So you don't have to do what's calling try catch every time everywhere. So you can see it to be well rich. You just need to call it once and your code will be what will be um will be reduced to the minimal points. Anyway, so let's go on. So at this point, you want the user to be able to what to log in with what the email and password. Yeah, I also skip one important thing. Now this password that is here okay that is going into the database is the what is the password that the user actually passed now we want the we don't want to know the password needs to be what to be hashed okay so that you know so that uh, we need to actually what secure the password even we the developers will not be able to what to know the password that the user actually what actually on um, typed when registering the account so in this case there is a there's a model or there's a library or there's a package that can help us to what to hash the hash password. I'm going to use um bcrypt. So I'm going to say npm install bcrypt. This is just going to what to uh, encrypt and um, decrypt. It performs encryption and decryption of some certain um strings. But basically, they use it in what's in hashing password. All right. So, in this case, when the user has already supplied us with the password, before before the password enters the database, we need to what to first hash it. So I'm just going to say before then I need to actually what import. Let me just say, just call it bequit, the same name that I used there. Import bequit from bequit yep i hope this button is right okay that's why this thing is on the line gdp why i i wrote the same thing again sorry yp <laughs> that's it so i'm just going to click another variable let, let me just call it hashed password so i'm going to use an await because this should be an asynchronous on this thing so bequit dot hash there's a there's a function called hash okay it's just expecting what the the string which is what the hash password and um, the password what you want to actually what perform the hash on right which is just password there's there's also something you can generate you can determine the length of this your hash password 
All right, there is something called um, salt, okay? You can pass in, they call it salt. Yeah, but by default, this thing we use a sort of what or pen. Actually, by default, it's going to be the pen. So your password will be like in this pattern. Okay, that means the hash password will be like, let's say this is a plain password text. When you hash it, you're going to get something like, uh, oh, I don't think it's not actually doing this. So I'm just passing 10. But by default, let's, it's going to use 10. Okay, please do endeavor to actually go through the what the um the documentation of what of liquid to actually understand we might not be able to cover everything in this section every package every model that i actually use in this section we might not be able to cover it okay and during this section so that's why i'm only referring you to this what this documentation so that you can just see you can read about what we actually what we actually doing here all right so um all right so we are good to go so now what will not be saving into the database will not be password anymore it will be what it will be the what the hash password in this case so let me get rid of this guy and just passing the hashed password that's what we're actually what we're actually saving in the database not the raw the plain text password but the what the encrypted was password with the help of what this um liquid okay so i think this i think we should test this okay i think we should test it before we actually want to move on so now so let me just hang this one here let me comment this one out so now that we've we've um created the function the logic to what to create a user let's see if this is actually working so there is a there's a software that is, that is used to test um api endpoints it's called what postman because you know i mentioned in the first section that what your browser is only performing one method is only performing is only able to perform a single request which is what the get request your browser cannot perform post or but we make use of an external software called um, postman so now i'm going to create you might want to like um go and look at um how to use postman i'm not going to talk about how to use postman but just follow me okay i want to log in into my own account actually so redirecting i should have done this before i don't know why i'm doing it now why you know redirecting okay yeah sweet so i have some actually um some api connections collection here so i'm just going to create a new collection for this i'm going to call it on um, price the name of our app which is price precision and you put api all right so inside this i just want to perform i just want to add the request here all right let's call this let's even test let me cross call it a test route so let's test. You know, we actually were tested that this server is actually working on on the browser. Let's let's come and test it here to see that to make sure that it is working. So the first thing to do is to what is to start up your server, okay? <coughs> Which is to run npm run dev. I hope you haven't forgotten this. We are using Node More, which was which created a script to what called dev to what to start up Node More with. So use on load mode to start up our server. I'm going to explain that again. Now we have some couple of errors. Okay. Um okay, yeah, I think I know where this is coming from. Uh where is your route? Yeah, I do not pass dot GSA. So node mode should actually automatically what you start this server after correcting this. There is an error from here, import your ID. From UID. Hmm. There is a syntax error here. I'm not importing this UID correctly. So let me quickly check the documentation just to be sure of how to import UID. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah, this was actually what I was supposed to use. Then call it. You can see the what's the result that you're going to get when you call that. So this is actually we are using the ES6 and our models that okay. We are using the ES, it's not the common one, which is this guy. So you can always check the documentation if you are all these things, you don't need to plan it anyway. So you can see I was wrong on the importation of these UID. So that was like this guy chose an error. I think we have a message. I have a question on the ink or but in a minute. Let me just quickly fix this. Um so import this this as this. Then the next thing all I need to do is just to call the what UID for function on this place. <coughs> That should sort. That should fix the issue. Okay. Now we are no longer getting the error from the UID. We are not getting an error from this guy. There's nothing called handler. So let me just comment this particular line for now. Now we say that the server is listing on the connection has been established. So our server has what started. So let me check my hint call and see where the message is coming from. Oh, good evening. Good evening, um, Ibrahim. We are welcome. I hope you are following, and I hope I'm not performing magic here. Any questions so far? So this is how all that just did manage just to debug some little error from my work from my console based on what you can see. The last thing I'm getting is what your server is listening on, and that is the same thing that if you go to our entry point file. This is what if the connection was successful, this is what we get on the console. And this connection establishes as a result of what these are database on connection that's actually on past here that says that well, if there is an error, you bring out this, but there was no error. That's why it's, it's, we are getting this point on the console. Let me see. All right. So let's move on. Now let's first test this our. This is our test route. Actually, this is our test route. So we are using to test that what this server is actually working. So we are going to pass in this address together with what with this path. Okay. So that's on, on Postman. So where is okay? I think that's on. Well, I don't have anything here. So I'm just going to come and copy this guy here. HTTP. But let me just set this as a variable. You, you might be you be wondering. Let me just call this on base <laughs> base URL. I want to create a variable for this my URL. Sorry. So I'm calling it on base URL. So it's just so that I'll be able to instead of me for every um for every request, I will need to pass this as what as the URL. So I just want to pass this as a base URL so that I'll just be changing what. The path to each um the only thing I'll just be passing in my in my request is just the path, right? But don't worry about this, you will actually get the end of it. So I'm just going to call the what the base URL, then passing what test like this. So if I should send this request, I should be getting this message that what this app is running. So let me just say this. So let me create another request. For the what the create user. Yep. So create user is actually using the base URL, but create user is actually using a default for user. We have we mounted a router called slash user. I'm just going to pass it here, slash user. And going back to our route, followed by what slash create. So slash create. Basically, because I've actually our endpoint to actually our create user will be what this HTTP colon slash slash localhost colon four thousand slash user slash create. That's the endpoint to what to register an account. That's the what the 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 front end will consume when they want to actually what when they click on the submit button on the registration page. Okay, so now in this place. We are just like this one is just a simulation of because we don't have a front end to actually consume this. So we are actually using this one to just um, test our endpoint. So what we are passing here is a JSON data. 
and the data are this guys that is here, the name, blah, 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 blah. So let me just quickly, oh, oh, this thing is going to take a while. Just follow me and uh, don't mind what I'm doing. So all these things should be a string. So someone should give me a false name. Okay, let me just use top one. All right, and then last name, I don't know if, so for, okay. And uh, we have a front of this issue as well, but we have any content. So, name, yeah. number, so, you see us. Number is also a batcher, right? So, it should be a string here. Batcher, not number. So, let me just say plus. Two, three, four, five, five, six, seven, seven, three, nine, nine. Well, I think this is top my number. So, email address. Um, let's say top man. Top man. Was at gmail dot com. The password. Mm. Let's see, let me just say password is password. Mm. That's top man's password. So if you have you know top man's on Facebook um username, just put this password to work. So business, let's call this code tribe. You're not you not teach your thing now. <laughs> I know I use my name. <laughs> Description. I'll do you back. <laughs> Description. Uh, let's just say ALX. ALX software. Engineering. Let me just say. Engineering. Let me just say. Simplifying. Simplifying. Because I think that's what Ghost Drive starts for. Ah, now wow. <laughs> Simplifying ALX software engineering program. All right. Program. Okay, sweet. So business address. Come on. We have an address for this guy. Oh, everywhere. We are everywhere. <laughs> so, but this actually be an address. But now there's actually something I did not actually um, implement on this. Um, logic is what we call um, validation you need to validate that what that i think that's what <clears throat> you know when you're creating an input on um, tag on the front end there's always this um, required um keyword that you pass on the input on um, like an attribute that's required that's what is validating that what this particular input is required you can also do that on validation on this but that one is not really a good validation anyways but you can't just, but anyways, you can also style the validation and be like, oh, if any of this, um, of this request body is not passed, we are going to pass a required message, a, a good message that says that what, oh, first name is required. If it's the first name that you omitted, you are going to get a response that says that what, first name is required and stuff like that. So that the front end can use it and style it and probably be a pop up on the, on the sidebar at the top here or be like a, another small pop-up under the input field and stuff like that. Instead of having to say require, this field is required. You don't need that. That's not really good enough. But anyways, enough talking. So let's test. I'm expecting errors anyways. So we have the first name, last name, blah, 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 everything already here. So we are not going to want to send the request. Now, before sending it, you know, this is a get. You need to change it to a post request, actually, not a get request. So fingers crossed. So we have our server started. So let me clear this terminal first. So in case of any error, we are going to see the error here. Please, I want to plug that. Yeah. So let me send this. Oh, we get internal server error. Sweet. I was expecting this anyways. So there was an error here. They said error creating user cannot destructure property first name of request body as it is undefined. 
<laughs> that means this first name, what will be part here? First on the first name and the request body as it is undefined. That's weird. That's weird. You know what? Let's do a further debugging here. Let me just console.log and so dot log request dot body because I don't know what why this one is saying this but actually passing so let's see what the what the request body look like on our console so I will send this again says um excuse me the the main conversion you followed um in I don't know whether that's what you have in the table my SQL okay. table but so, Especially not first uh, underscore it's name, it's error. first name, no underscore. Oh, really? Yes, yeah, I don't know whether you did something different. Uh, oh, underscore. that's what they did, that's what they have. Oh, yeah. it's okay, that oh, means no, you're, 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 you're... Yeah, let me open okay. my... Let's, let's go into the my SQL table first. Should do my SQL dash P. Ah, what's my password again? I'll come here. I'm only forgetting this password. Oh, this is not the password for my SQL, it's the password for my system because I'm using the sudo command. Are you serious? I've forgotten you. All right, then the password for the my SQL. Oh, yeah, inside. So let me see show data basis. So we have the database here. Where is the price prescription? So let's use it. Use, but I'm not going to actually do, I'm not going to write the keyword in our package box. So we've changed to the database. Let's describe this database and see. Right? That's the word, right? I think you should show the tables first. Okay, okay yeah. Let's see so we'll show. Show tables, right? Yeah, tables. Oh, oh there's no table here. Wow. Are you serious? I'm not actually created. Yeah, you sent it So sorry about that, my bad. So let's create these tables. I can actually. And um, please, uh, in between, in between the first and second table, create an index. Otherwise, you get an error. Okay. Because yeah, you are referencing business okay do the first of all first what's that you think that yeah, somewhere oh there's a cup here sorry go back okay, let me play this video yeah done yeah. and then do guy Okay, so you need you need to create an index, <laughs> otherwise you won't be able to use that stuff as so create an index for the column. So let's go create index. Okay. Yes. Create index. You can give it the name you'd like to give it. Any name. Uh, any name will work, but it should it should make sense. It should be something that relates with it. Give me a name, give me a name. Okay, okay, let's go. Let's go. Index. Index underscore user underscore business ID. I think that we do. User underscore business ID. All right, so on. No, no, no. On user table, not business. Oh. Sorry, user info. User info. Yeah, uh, that will do. That's so we do that and then do that for before you run the for you create the second table. Okay. All right. Let's see that table again. Let's see. All right. We're good. <coughs> okay. So we are good. But this error is not. That cannot be structured for from the request of body, which is something 
feel strange. Let's go back. So, um, are you sure this is okay? Okay, go ahead. Please, what's the error code exactly? Did you display the error code? No battery. Okay. She's talking about five something. Let me Seven. before it gets to this particular thing. I, I hope this has nothing to do with that table that was not there. That my table that was not there. I hope it hasn't gotten to this point. It is at this stage. It is at this oh. line for yeah. So let me explain this again and see what we will get. We are getting the time as the request for this. Wow. Okay, well, oh. uh, Oh. That. oh, you got it. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I'm using a different object as a request body. So I need to actually oh. use a video where that will actually allow me to <coughs> to access a different object that is part of the body. So you actually, then express as the middle way. So we have to choose. Of course. Express dot JSON actually. That means you want to use um JSON object and use your use your your voice is going to look from my end. I hope your voice is still okay. okay let me just your mic can see it. Okay, hello, can you hear me? Yeah, yes. Okay. So I'm using this um this JSON function. So it's a middleware actually in Express that that returns that um pass on JSON object from the request where the where the content header matches the type option. That means you know in this header, you know these are in this our postman, these are headers actually. So in, we are passing this body as a what as a raw text, but it is of a JSON type. So we need to actually have our Express app to use that on JSON middleware so that we'll be able to work to. That's why it's trying the error that there was nothing. That's why I couldn't read anything from the request body when I must okay. upload this request body here. Okay, so let me just remove this guy out. So this should actually throw us a different kind of error, I believe. So let's send you again. Internal server error again. But now we are getting Error converting JSON blah 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 to string blah 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 blah. The error is coming from here, but I think the user has already been created, anyways. Let me undo. Let's go back to our my SQL. Let's <coughs> select everything from the user table already as user info. user info. Yep, yeah. I knew it would have been created. So the issue is from this what is, this is is from, I think there's a way you can actually do this. Ah, no. Oh. There's a way you can actually do that thing. Yeah. So let me show. Oh, I did not get this thing. That's not it. There's a way you can actually display this thing on the phone. But I'm not sure if you guys will be able to see this very well like this. So we have the top man for the key, blah 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 blah. You can see the password that we are seeing here. Okay, do you know what? Let's let's make let me even display this thing well. Let me use the bench this thing. So what's my password again? Hold on. Zero eight zero. <laughs> <Nine four two. laughs> Uh, sorry about this. So okay, yeah. So where's that table? Price, position, table. This guy. Hmm. Open the user info from. Okay. 
need to actually perform the query here. I'm too lazy to type, don't mind me. Something I've even type finished. So, where is that one? Uh, why are you not showing? Yeah, so let me change this. Uh, can you guys see this? Uh, I'm not sure if you guys can see this, but Okay, this is the other one that has them on different um, rows, right? I see. It has like this, yeah, something like this. Uh, we can manage at least we are seeing the details in the dark environment. Yeah, yeah. Names. So the first name is top man, last name is this, gender, phone number, email. You can see the way the password is being is being saved. So this is because we hashed it. Then co tribe is the business name. We have the business ID, a randomly generated ID, you can see. Then the description and then the business address. We are everywhere. So there you go. So this endpoint is working. But now there's an issue. The reason why it's showing this error is because we are actually returning. What we are returning is not able to. The issue is because of this guy that is here let me go back to this place i think if i try to actually create this again it should show an error so let's go here okay um actually our time yeah. was up about <laughs> so really good our time is up so um i think we could take it from here in the next back end section yeah take it from here in the back end section all right i want to thank everyone that is live on this that joined us live and if you're watching on youtube thank you as well for joining i mean it's cool when we learn together like this you know i cherish public learning i cherish fair learning you know i cherish i cherish teamwork it's man there's something about it that you can't get from solo learning so thank you very much this app we started from the scratch and we are taking it to the finish and We'd like you to be part of it you can you can join the team officially actually you can join the team officially if you wish to just contact any one of us and we'll link you in as if you have some prerequisite knowledge you can join us from here so for now i'm going to say bye and see you in the next one of course in the next session we're going to be talking about oh let me not expose it now you will get the invitation thank you